Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So today we got a fun one. Okay, this article was pretty interesting. It's 15 products millennials won't buy and it's changing the American economy. <laughs> so 15 things they won't buy or do. And we'll read each one and we'll say, hey, do you think it's true? I'm not a millennial, yeah, so I, I have know. no idea. But the article starts with- You are at heart, Jimmy. At heart I am, but not even close. <laughs> Millennials have impacted how we do things as a society. They have slowly made their mark on the changing world and these changes are starting to come to fruition. Whether you agree with them or not, these are some of the things that may become extinct thanks to millennials refusing to engage them. I could honestly say that um, things have changed. Yeah, of course. You know, th things, things have changed uh, time. So Bill, read the first one. All right, chain restaurants. When deciding where to grab an after work drink or splurge on dinner out on the town, millennials are ditching the popular chain restaurants. Chains like Applebee's, Chili's, Buffalo Wild Wings are being passed up for locally owned small business restaurants. Millennials value seeing their money returned to their community rather than giving it to the larger corporate structures that manage the larger chains. I personally uh, disagree with that one. The reason why I disagree with it is a lot of these places that you just mentioned, I eat at, and, right. I'm, and I'm always waiting to get in. <laughs> right. Know? And it's not all baby boomers in there and, you know. Right, right. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, no, I agree. I think it's kind of, there's there's two sides to that because I like supporting the small business owner as well. Uh, one thing that I don't necessarily specifically agree with about this is just because it's a chain doesn't mean that it's not a local owner. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like somebody could buy a franchise and then they're a local person who owns that restaurant. So you're, you are supporting that person yeah, just because it's, it's a franchise. Even McDonald's a franchise. Exactly. Those are, those are owned, those are franchisees typically. All right. The wedding industry. Millennials are changing the way couples spend their money on their wedding day. Millennials weddings are more likely to be held in a backyard or open space or catered by a food truck rather than a fancy venue with expensive caterer. Due to health concerns, the pandemic also made many ceremonies smaller okay. and more intimate. Lavish weddings might slowly fade away if the trend of millennials have set to continue in future generations. So my uh, nephew just got married. Right. And it was on the beach, the wedding, you know, it was, it was nice. It was a beautiful wedding. But it wasn't the grand thing, you know. Right, yeah, of course. But I mean, like, I've been to a couple friends' weddings over the years, like back when I was in my 20s. Now, I'm, you know, a little bit, just a little bit older. But we've done beach weddings. We've had super expensive weddings. You know, it's just, it kind of is what you like or what you don't like. And maybe probably geographically driven, too, a little bit. You well, know? in the, you know, a lot of my family and friends got married in the 80s, 90s. Mm -hmm. And it's... They were lavish, like two, three hundred people in a catering hall. Right. Maybe that is going away. So that one, yeah, I don't know. That one, I might agree with. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm mixed. I mean, I just, we just went to a wedding, and technically it was outside, but this was this. I mean, it was like, and it was a pretty awesome, yeah, outside wedding, like that kind of rivaled some lavish weddings. So I don't know. All right. I don't know on that one. So I can't. You do the next one. Diamonds. The saying, diamonds are a girl's best friend, might become a thing of the past if millennials have anything to say about it. Handcrafted options with gemstones are becoming more popular because of their cheaper prices. Millennials simply do not have as much income as the older generation did at their age, and expensive diamond rings uh, does, does not fall into millennials' budget with little disposable income. All right, that one I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Comment uh, down below. Let us know. That one, I don't know. I, I don't know. doing away from the, I mean, uh, the wedding ring? I mean, the, the gauge Well, just ring? the diamond in the wedding ring and kind of going towards a, 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 a less expensive stone, you know, as an alternative because of, you know, diamonds are obviously outrageously expensive, as we all know. And then so maybe, you know, they're trying to keep the budget down. Yeah, so. I kind of could, could see that because, you know, right now with inflation and everything's so expensive. Yeah. Maybe they are cutting back. Yeah, I mean, maybe everybody is. I don't know. So, all right, let's do the next one. It's my turn. <laughs> cable cable TV. TV. Millennials might 
might have been the first generation of cord cutters. With the rise of streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and Apple TV, there's no need for costly monthly cable bill packages. The streaming service make it easier for customers to find their favorite shows and movies, while the old cable method has yet to adapt the changing culture. I agree with that one, except one part. Yep. Okay, because I cut the cable. I know. <laughs> I am subscribed to so many things that it's either the same price as it would have been for, for me cable. keeping my cable. Yep with premium channels or I'm paying more money now. Right, and I'm also starting to see, cause I, I, you know, I do the same thing. I don't have regular cable, I've got the streaming stuff, but you know, we have all these different services, some named here, but I'm noticing like things now, you know, you're starting to see commercials now. It's becoming more like regular TV than it is the streaming service, but it's a streaming service. Oh yeah, like, you know, prices are going I did up. Peacock TV the other day because I just want to watch one show and so I just subscribed and by the time I cancel it, that one show probably is gonna end up costing me a hundred bucks. But, <laughs> but the, uh, it was commercials. Right, and, and I'm seeing that on everything like Hulu, and then they say, you know, I don't know which provider it is to be honest with you. Um, but one of the providers, you know, it's like if now if you don't want commercials, you can pay even more, and then you, you avoid out, you know, you don't have to watch the commercials on the streaming service. So I mean, I've had Netflix for, I don't even know I how many years. Yeah, that one know. is one of the first ones I yep. had. I used to, this is how I'm dating myself. They used to mail me DVDs. Right. They used to mail me DVDs. I would watch the movies. Yeah, like Redbox. <laughs> yeah, then I would mail them back. That's how, that's yep. how long ago it was. Yep, good old Redbox. All right, you're the next one. All right, uh, it says wasteful products. Single use items like paper plates, napkins, plastic water bottles, straws, and bags are being passed up for reusable totes and metal water bottles, uh, a Yeti or a Stanley portable water bottle is almost a fashion statement. Millennials are much more educated and concerned about climate change and anything to lower their carbon footprint is viewed as a small victory. I agree with that. I have no idea. Yeah, I, I agree with I that just, one. I go to some market, I see everybody saying, you know, every time they ask you, you want plastic or paper? Everybody always says plastic, you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> I have right. no idea. The, but one part I do agree is, is you know, the, the the tumblers, you know, they, they are kind of a fashion statement. You know, they are? They, well, yeah. I mean, every, I've got different tumblers. I mean, we don't necessarily care. I just go, I need the big tumbler because I'm going to be gone for a while, or I need the little tumbler. You know what? I get a kick out of it's not part of this thing, but it's like, why would you? you I see people going paying eight, nine dollars for a cup of coffee at Starbucks, one of those fancy coffees. Yeah. When you go to Dunkin' Donuts and get it cheaper, I mean, it's get, Dunkin' Donuts again. Dunkin' expensive. Donuts is expensive because I just went and oh my gosh, whew. Yeah, but or make a cup of coffee. I would me. I just make, make it cup, at home. I make it at home with a, a Keurig, and I just put it in a cup. You're and fancy. I, yeah. And I, I still go. I got a Keurig, but I still do that old scoop thing. Yeah, I don't do that. All right, next one. Big beer companies. The trend for local small batch breweries and beer pubs has risen among millennials. The connections of these small brands have their communities is what appeals to the generation. Wearing your favorite brewery shirt to a hip way to show support for your community and prefer giving your money back to a local business. I've never gone to a brewery in my life. <laughs> So you answer that one because I don't drink at all. Right, you drink at all. I don't drink beer a lot, but I do go to breweries. So I think I am inspecting a brewery. You are inspecting a brewery. I am inspecting. I go every week almost and, and yeah, do the inspection. Do your on the brewery. Yeah, your steps, your step, uh, your step inspections. Yep. Yep. So like, I, really? yep. I get it, but I think that's an everybody thing, not necessarily just a millennial. Because I know a lot of, you know, I see a lot of people, because there's a brewery right outside of my neighborhood, basically. And, you know, I see a bunch of varying ages going there because beer is a big thing. You know, I still meet, there's a couple other people that I meet on a regular basis at a brewery, but, you know, we're in our 50s. So I think it's a little bit of everybody, but I could see that. And again, it's giving back to the local community, kind of which we touched on, you know, earlier. So I totally understand that. All right, so you're the next one. Yeah, houses. Perfect. So this one's good for you. Yeah, ironic. Uh, let's be clear here. It is not that millennials don't want to buy a home. It's they are they simply can't afford it. With the rising cost of homes and their upkeep, millennials are opting to rent or live with roommates to save money. Studies have shown that housing costs have drastically gone up since the 80s. 
with wages struggling to keep up, meaning millennials will have a tough time becoming homeowners. All right. They're not going to have a tough time becoming homeowners. They're going to have a tough... Good catch. Yeah, the wind's blowing. The wind is blowing today. They're going to have a tough time becoming a homeowner maybe as soon as they want to have, be a homeowner, mm -hmm. you know, because it is harder. So you're going to have to work longer, you know, and kind of move up the ladder a little bit, if you will, before you might be able to have a wage that allows you to purchase that home. Um, but that goes for a lot of people, too. Yeah, it's not just millennials. It's not just problem. millennials. Sorry, it's it's like, it's it's an everybody problem right now. Yeah, and you know because with, you know with the especially with the rapid growth of equity, and the the not so rapid growth of wages, you know. But we don't want rapid growth of wages either because look at what's happened. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we can go off on a tangent on this, but yeah, in California they went up to twenty bucks an hour. What's happening? People are losing their jobs, and they're going to automate everything. We're right. Going to actually, do a video on that very soon. Right, and then now they don't have a job, so they can't buy a house. So it's it's an everybody problem not so, just a yeah, millennial I think that was a smart move meanwhile they were making money maybe not 20 bucks an hour but now they're making nothing but again let's not go down that path <laughs> that's like I said we'll have a whole video on that one all right department stores the rise of online shopping has made it much easier to buy products without going to the store we have seen stores like Kmart Sears Toys R Us fail slowly and disappear in the past decade Sadly, another store might be see the same fate. Online stores like Amazon, Etsy, Wayfair offer items at a much cheaper cost and convenience factor of shopping online. I agree with that one um, because me, if I want something and I can wait a day or two, right, I'll order from Amazon. And now I'm within the drop zone pretty much of the Amazon warehouse. So a lot of stuff I order, I get it the same day. Right, right. And for convenience, it just makes life a little bit easier. No, I agree with it. Like, if you think about it, if you go to a store right now, the, the typical department stores don't nearly have as much stuff as they used to. You know, a lot of things are online. So, and Amazon, I mean, it, they make it so easy to buy stuff. And they I make mean, it easy to return stuff too. Right, which just kind of goes into another, if there's, there was that, I don't know if you saw it, there was that uh, Amazon documentary it talked about all the returns and how their policies and where the stuff goes mm -hmm. um it was a pretty interesting one but um yeah i mean that's the beauty of it it's easy i don't have to get in my car i don't have to drive to the store I have to wait in line return my item um clothes i probably would still go to the store to buy yeah, yeah, you course, know yeah. unless i know it's like this specific jean or specific short and i don't need to go to the store anymore because i'm gonna buy the same one i wear the same fishy shirt seven days a week just different colors just different colors so like you could order those <laughs> and it would be fine yeah so and seven seven shorts and seven shirts seven shirts and you're good, good to go and then you just throw them up in the air after they're washed and you know which one's going to be for that day cruises cruises huh Cruises are becoming more of a boomer vacation than a millennial one. Millennials want to absorb a new city's local culture, cuisine, and ambience rather than the all-inclusive cruise. Cruises can be great for a convenient, basic vacation. Still, they don't provide the thrill of staying in cheap hotels, trying street food, and diving into the vibe of an exotic destination. Um. I kind of agree with that one. Yeah. I, I do Royal Caribbean, and on Royal Caribbean, you know, it's older people. I don't see a lot of millennials on it, you know, but again, if you go on, what's that other cruise line? Carnival? Carnival. That's a younger crowd. It's definitely a younger crowd. I've noticed on the cruises that I've been on that the, the length of time makes a big difference because like let's say you're on a seven day cruise that's like your entire vacation the the day the first day you're off and the last day you're off before you have to go back to work mm -hmm. so it may just lend itself to being maybe an older crowd i don't know um but i've always found that cruises were my way of exploring small spaces to see if i wanted to go back and stay long term and visit you know what I mean? Like, oh, this this place is pretty cool. Let's go back and spend actual time at this one. Um, although I haven't been on a cruise in a while. Yeah, I so, love cruises. Well, it was COVID, so we couldn't go on them for the longest time. All right, business suits. A suit and tie <laughs> yeah. have been stranded, oh, standard in business fashion for as long as I can remember. This idea could be disappearing thanks to many young CEOs and business professionals. Arguably, one of the biggest millennial company leaders, Mark Zuckerberg, never wears a suit. I can get on board with this trend. I never understood why 
necktie made me look more professional. You know what? When I grew up and I worked in the suit in the 80s and yeah. early 90s, I wore a suit every day when of course. I was in the mortgage profession. Now, I don't, obviously, because I'm a home inspector. I would look stupid. But I kind of agree with this one because when I see a lot of people, the, the older generation, look, look at the 1930s and 40s and 50s, you know. Right. When women and men went out, you know, they wore hats, they dressed up, even right. when they go get milk, you know. Right. It was an ordeal. My grandmother wouldn't come and pick me up at school if I was sick without being completely done. Right. So, like, I it mean, was a thing. Yeah, it was a thing. And now, as time goes on, people really, you know, really don't care what they look like. <laughs> right? They'll, they'll just go out and be like... <laughs> yeah, some know. of the fashions are a little interesting, but to say the least, you know. But those fashion trends, I think, come and go. But I do think that the way people dress now is, you know, we can do like that sport casual, you know, business casual, things like that. Um, I hate to see ties go because I love my ties and I love my suits, don't get me wrong, but um, I very rarely wear a tie. Yeah, I don't blame I wear you. a coat, but I don't wear a tie or a sports coat. All right, go to the next one. Stilettos. Kind of goes with the... <laughs> still, just like men ditching suits and ties, women are no longer looking to wear those uncomfortable high heels in the workplace. The trend is to be presentable and comfortable is something millennials love. I have never worn stilettos, but I imagine they are pretty uncomfortable. This is the writer of the article. Also, I didn't see the need for them to make stilettos? a person. No, I don't wear stilettos. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. Maybe they make like size 13 wides for I stilettos. <laughs> My wife loves stilettos. Dairy milk. That's interesting. You read that one because I don't even drink milk. Man, I think I did because I needed it for a recipe. So I was like, well, I can't throw it away. All right, what does but it say about prior that? generations were told that drinking milk to help grow their muscles and build strong bones. But millennials just aren't buying it. Literally, they aren't buying milk anymore. Dairy Farmers of America have reported a drop in sales by 40% during the lifetime of millennials and Gen Zers. With healthier options like almond, soy, and oat milk, dairy cows uh, have been getting a very uh, vacation in recent years. I don't know. I've seen a ton of stuff on this, and I mean, I still like uh, milk. You guys comment below on the yeah. dairy milk. I and I drink. I I like coconut milk. It's uh, it's it's sweet. I use it in my coffee. All right, nine to five work days. The new normality of, of people working from home makes the typical workday look different. Flexibility is a key among millennials. The ability to work more hours more condu conducive to their terms of highly sought after. As long as the work gets done and is and it is time sensitive and flexibility could be an option, it benefits both the employee and the boss. Work from home, I think people abuse that working from home. Yep. I think they do abuse it. I think some instances it's it's smart. But if you notice a lot of big corporations saying, hey, you're coming back to the office or you're fired. Right, because there, there was there's a ton of studies about productivity and people just aren't as productive at home mm -hmm. in certain positions. In certain things, sometimes they are, but like, you know, they're like, all right, I'm home. Let me go do the laundry real quick. Let me go walk the dog real quick. It's very easy to be distracted. Very easy to be distracted. But if you're at work, that's what you're right. doing. You're working. And talking about the millennials, like, I think just since this is about millennials, millennials need to understand that you have to work. And not every job is going to cater to, well, I get up at 10 or I get up at 7 or I'm an early bird and get up at, you know, 5 or 6 or I like to stay up late. Certain jobs do and certain jobs don't. You know, certain jobs expect you have to be open. Like if I call a certain business that's open, you know, let's say 9 to 5, those are work hours and I expect that service company or whatever it is to, to be there. Yeah, you know? now they're pushing for four-day work weeks and all that <sighs> stuff. You know, it's... It, a lot of people just don't want to work anymore. That's what, it, that's what I'm... At the end of the day, yeah. they just don't want to work anymore. And you have to work if you want, to, if you want right. things in, a, you know, in life, like a house, a car, and stuff. Nobody's just going to hand you the stuff. Well, maybe. If you want your products made, you want your vehicle, you want all the stuff that you want, somebody has to be there to actually put hands on it and make it and build it. So that's what I'm saying. There's, there's shifts, there's schedules, things are done for a reason, and sometimes they just aren't conducive to our wants. And at the end of the day, I loved my career, 
Mm -hmm. And there, but at the, everybody, there's no perfect career. I love my career, but there's no perfect career. So, all right, go for the next know, one. Um, Oh, bulk groceries, uh, large retailers like Sam's and Costco are seeing low member. What? <laughs> That's what I'm oh my God! Oh, among the millennials. Okay, we jumped yeah. the gun. And Gen Zers, maybe it's because generation tends to live in apartments and smaller homes, which makes total sense. Or they prefer to shop at local markets and groceries instead. Okay, at least in our area, we don't have a ton of local markets and groceries like the small mom and pops. So like we used to go to the bodega up in New York. Yeah. Um, same thing like. Uh, where family members of mine are from, you go to a local store. There, there aren't any real big chain groceries. Yeah, I, I agree with that one in the sense when I go to Sam's Club, which is pretty much every week, um, everybody there is older. I really don't. I rarely see millennials. I really don't either. Yeah, I'm thinking about like Costco and Sam's I by really, my house. I really don't. Yeah. But, you know, we have a house. We have more room and everything. Yeah, you can't talk about this one because you've never, I, I, one you've I, never stepped foot in one of these, yeah, have I'm you? I'm not going to step foot in one. Go ahead. You talk to them about that one. Gyms. Yeah. So right. millennials are not the gyms that go on your, your, your jewelry. <laughs> millennials are still looking after their health, but do so in a different way than they did in the past. Traditional gyms are being passed over for niche studios like CrossFit, Pilates, cycling, and yoga. The rise of online fitness programs also makes older gym styles a little more outdated. Um, you would know because you go to the I gym. I go to the gym. Right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, like, what's up? Because you're advertising. Yeah, because I have to. <laughs> you're advertising there. Let's be, let's be real. At least I admit it. Yeah, I step I just, in the gym. I wait. I, I don't go to the gym. <laughs> um, no, I, I agree. It's. I, I think it's. You know, the the rise of the different types of fitness platforms. I think is pretty cool, because it does offer a variety. You know, some people may only have 20 or 30 minutes, so they can pop it on their Apple TV, as an example, um, versus driving to a gym. Pilates, you know, Pilates is cool. It's fun. It's a different. It's tradi It's not the. It's a non-traditional, non-impact type thing. So I think offering. I don't even know what that is. But yeah, I know. I know. I think offering, you know, goes down to this: different strokes for different folks, and they're just offering different options for people. Period. So at the end of the day, is millennials changing society? Yes, they are. Of course they are. Okay. Uh, of course, like we, like. My generation growing up in the 80s, you know, in high school and all that stuff, we changed things. Of course. We did things differently from our parents. And my, our parents did this, things differently from our grandparents. So it's going to happen. So, yes. And then somebody's going to change the way millennials do things now. Right. They'll probably want a one day of work week. Work right. <laughs> I'm going to work 24 hours and then I'm done. Yeah. So... That's today's video. <laughs> Tell us what you guys really think about this with millennials. And do me a favor, you like this kind of content. I know we're real estate mostly, but we like to break it up once in a while. Right. Consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel and it really motivates us to do, you know, more videos. Thank you and we'll talk to you in the next one. See you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.